Hello, this is H.C. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Dragon Quest IV! Let's put that ultimate key to some more use. There's one more treasure that I want to get, back at Porth Tunnel. I'm surprised I got no comments. H.C. Bailey, there's a treasure that you can still get with the ultimate key over here. Because it's basically the only one that I haven't gotten, besides... Well, there's one at the bottom of the cave that we were told about, but, uh... Well, we'll get to that soon enough, but... In this chest, we get the Massacre Sword. You use that as an item in battle to cast Kassap, which is basically the sap spell, but it works on all enemies at half strength, so it only removes half their defense. I would recommend saving that for later years, because that can be pretty useful. Now that I think about it, I don't know that I ever use it, but... Anyway, now that we've gotten the ultimate key... I'm guessing that's the trigger for us to be able to expand Chicago again, or whatever you call it, Hoffman's place. So, usually when you want to expand the town and you've gotten past a certain point in the story, you have to talk to someone in the village and they'll say, hey, there's this other person looking for a new town to settle in. And they'll tell you where he, he or she is, and you warp over there, in this case it's Berlin, you go to find them, you say, hey, there's this town over there, you want to join up, and they'll come on over and the town will expand. So, pretty simple process. You just got to know when to do it, that is. So, uh, yeah, sure. Let's go to Chicago. It'll be a great place for you. Well, it's kind of hard to set course for there. It's in the middle of a desert, but, uh... Ah, yeah, and sometimes when you find someone, he'll ask you to find someone else, too. So we gotta go to the inn and talk to this guy. Prelvis Esley? Really, game? Really? How many of you under 18 actually know what that's a reference to? I'm just curious. If you don't know what it's a reference to, you should wiki that. But anyway, okay, so we've gotten those two, so now we zoom back to Chicago, and the town should be expanded. It won't look any different, usually, but all right, we got a new building there, and new people here. You could probably have, like, other random people here if you were using that, uh, what is it? That thing that that guy was telling you about, um, what was it? That thing where you close the DS and you get people from other people playing Dragon Quest IV to move into your village or whatnot. But, uh, well, whatever it is. But, yeah, obviously I can't do that, so. Oh, sounds like a plan. You spoony bard! Viva la resistance! I don't even know what that's a reference to, viewers. You got me on that one. Starting to make references to things I've never even seen before. I don't know how that works, but in any case, in here we get mini metal number. Well, one of the mini metals. I forget which number it was. I was hoping I'd remember it by then. Ah, there we go. And okay, so those are mini metals number 35 and 36. So we're doing pretty good. Two more. We can get that sort of miracles. Uh, no, I hadn't heard. Oh, sounds like a plan. Nice shot there, game. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, well, anyway. Uh, yeah, they sell new stuff when you expand the town, but so far, still nothing that great. So, But obviously, when there's new houses or new pots or drawers, you can find new stuff in them. So, mostly, I did this for the mini metals, really. So, you said on Ragnar there. Uh, ooh, three points. Wow. I have never seen it get three points before. Usually it gives me like one, maybe two, but that's, even that's rare. But three? Wow. I've never seen that before. Well, that'll improve his defense a little bit. Now, here they're talking about a castle and well, some things about certain containers there. Remember that for later. Like, much later. Like, after you finish the game later. Just something to keep in mind. Okay, how's it going? What do you mean by that? 
Well, just talk to her, man. Huh. Oh, well. Okay. So what's going on? I don't think they ever explain that. I, I don't know what I did wrong, but sorry. Okay, well that's everything we can do here. Got the mini medals, that's really all I care about. So, let's see. Um, oh, you know what? I'm in the area still. As long as I'm here. Let's, uh, remember someone was saying about something about a chest at the bottom of the cave? Well, this is the cave he's talking about, so let's head on down there then. Now, there is one thing about the way I'm playing the game. You see these chests are refilled? That's not supposed to happen. I don't know why it happened. Maybe it's something with the way that I'm playing the game, or maybe there's a setting or a memory thing that's not right. I don't know. But somehow the chests always respawn here. I don't know why. And you can get another armlet of transmutation, which shouldn't happen either, because that makes no sense in the plot. But that's a bug. I don't know why it happened. So pay no attention to that, viewers. You've probably noticed that earlier in the game, too, when you saw a chest. Hey, H.C. Bailey, you missed a chest in an area that you went back to. Or revisited. But anyway, so we got the lightning staff there that can cast Sizzle. And I gave that to Borea, because he could use that. Oh, okay. I uh, put it in my inventory, I guess. So, But anyway, I've uh, rearranged my party as I have listed in the video description. So that way, well, I've got it ready for the next area that I'm going to go to. Now, remember where we found that the Sands of Time? Well, there was a locked door there. So, or, well, a jailer's door, or ultimate key door, whatever you want to call it. So, now we can go through there, so... Let's go check that out. The enemies there are very hard. You probably should do a little more level grinding to go through there, but I have patience problems. So I'm going to just head on over there then. Fortunately, I know exactly what I'm doing. Uh, let's see. Now you see I got the Sands of Time on Elena the Magma Staff and Staff of Divine Wrath on Mina, and the Lightning Staff on Borea there. I've also got the Icicle Dirk on Solo, even though I have him equipped with the Dragon's Bane, because he could use that as an item, too, to cast Crackle. So anyway, we got new enemies here. Mini Demons. Let's check them out. They are susceptible to pretty much all the elements I care about. Uh, let's see, Sand Vipers are susceptible to Whack and Dazzle, but that doesn't help me now, so... I can pretty much use whatever I want on these guys, just no debuffs. So, oh well. And the reason I chose this party for this area is so that way they can catch up on experience, because, well, I used the other three party members on, well, the, the boss dungeon. So these three are a little behind. There's no boss here or anything like that. Ow! That hurt! Well, anyway, uh, yeah, defend there, just in case. You never know. There we go. Got him. Yeah, might want to heal up Boria after that. Again, have Solo do the healing manually. Don't have Mina do the healing there. But anyway, if you hadn't been here before, you gotta use the Karstaway Stone to make to get through those steps there. You get that back at Dunplundrin. But I've already, I've already done that, so not. Now these guys aren't that hard. Let's see, incinerators. They are susceptible to pretty much any elemental magic, and snoops. So let's have Mina do that and use Crackle. Crackle is probably the most powerful level two elemental spell, so I like using that as much as I can. Kind of odd that so many monsters of the sea are actually susceptible to ice, but well, whatever works. I, I recall in Dragon Warrior 3 that wasn't the case. Like, you had to use fire magic on monsters of the sea, like, um, like Lufia, for example. Although they probably ripped it off of Dragon Quest, but whatever. But anyway, there we get mini metal number 37. Ooh, I can taste that sword of miracles, but, well, we can't get it yet, so, oh well. But anyway, um, did I fight the Pakutas before? Well, if I didn't, we're going to fight them now. So let's use Snooze on them, because they are susceptible to it. 
And yeah, Lightning Staff on the Sandpipers to finish them off. Let's see, Bakuda is susceptible to almost any element that I care about except Frizzle. But I don't need to worry about that while I'm here. So that's to that. Take out the Sand Viper, and then we should be pretty good. Maybe uh, use that Staff of Divine Wrath. I forgot to mention that casts Swoosh, which is the level 2 Whoosh spell. So let's start whittling them down to size. That's, they woke up. I always like flying fish. Food tastes better when it's flying. I almost said frying, but, uh, well, now we're gonna fry them. Like a hamburger. Just like the one in Zelda 1. Against those like likes. They kind of look like hamburgers to me. Well, anyway, yeah, just heal up a little bit there. Yeah, most of the enemies here, well, I think I've shown most of them by now. So, pretty much the same things that you'd meet up with in a... in the ocean. Got a death mask there. It's cursed, so I wouldn't equip it, but you might want to hold on to that for later. It doesn't sell for very much, I don't think. I could be wrong on that, I don't know. But I will hold on to it anyway. When did the encounter rate get so high in this game? Did my side LP invade? I don't think so. But anyway, yes, all right, we made it. And in this chest, we get the Liquid Metal Sword, one of the most powerful weapons in the game. You remember the Masamune in Final Fantasy 1? That's pretty much what this sword is. It's v well, maybe not the most powerful, but it's got to be up there and almost anyone can equip it, except like mages. But even Kirol and... Uh, Mina can equip it. Yeah, look at that attack power! It's almost a 100 attack power boost! Alright! But what's going on back at Roseville, that, or Rose Hill, that the Queen was telling us about? Find out next time on Let's Play Dragon Quest 4! This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day!